for and the king said unto him, Where is he? Yeah. And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Michar, uh -huh. the son of Amamel, in Lodabar. Yes. The word Lodabar means down. Down and up. Keep reading. Verse 5. Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machar, the son of Amamel, from Lodabar. Stop right there. So David asked, where is this person from the house of Saul? So Ziba told him, he's in the house of Machar in Lodabar. Way down there. David said, go get him. Let me tell you something. I don't care where you are. God knows your location. And he knows how to pull you out of your down state. Who am I preaching to in here? He knows how to pull you out. Watch this. Of poverty because he was down in Lodabar. He didn't have anything. But he was tied up from the lineage of a king. And he was down and out in Lodabar. God knows how to find you. Watch this. When is your time to be blessed? Watch this. It is just your time to be blessed. Oh, y'all want to hear me today. I feel as if it's somebody's time in here to be blessed. You've been waiting for years. You've been down and out in Lodabar. Watch this. Nobody knew you were there except Zebra. Somebody knows how to get in touch with you. Watch this. When the blessing is about to hit. Oh. When the blessing is about to hit, baby. Somebody knows how to find you. You may not even know it's getting ready to happen for you. You may not even know it is your time. But Seba knows. And God will send Seba right where you are. And say, go snatch her out of Lodabar. Go bring him out of Lodabar. Go bring him out of Hattie. Because I am a blessing for him. He needs to be blessed. It's time for a man to be blessed. Go get her. Go find her. She's been struggling. She's been going through. She's been talking about her. She's been getting through her. And his two legs were watching. Y'all didn't get it. And his two legs were lame. That means he couldn't help him. Will speak for itself. Your blessing will speak for itself. 
But God still has you on his mind. I feel the Holy Ghost. Watch this. Even though you can't help yourself, let me make it for you right where you live. Even though you're struggling to pay your bills because both of your legs are laying, even though you just barely have enough to pay your rent, you just barely have enough to pay your credit card, you don't even have that. You're trying to rob from people to pay Paul, trying to figure out what to pay, what to God. His mind, and he's gonna send your spiritual father, David, to the rescue. Watch this, because David has to release that blessing on you so that everything that you are in need of or everything that you don't have will start to pop up. Verse 5, verse 6 says, Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, uh -huh. was coming to David. Uh -huh. He fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. Stop. When Mephibosheth came before David, he probably was king by now. He fell to his face on his knees and reverenced his spiritual father. See, y'all gotta remember how to respect and honor Amen. your spiritual covering. Because they hold the key to a lot of things you supposed to get. Amen. And if we don't release it, it probably never may happen. If David didn't show up on the scene, to show himself or show kindness to Mephibosheth, he would still be in love, uh, down and out. I'm making this plain, as plain as I can be. Pastor, what you're saying, respect spiritual leadership. Respect spiritual authority. God honors that. That is the order of God. And I announce today that is the order of this house. And so, we see, just put my coattail I'm going to now. I, I'm, I'm almost there. And David said to me, and he answered, and okay, verse 7, watch the threefold blessing. Everybody look at somebody and say, threefold blessing. Threefold blessing. Look at somebody else and say, the threefold blessing. Threefold. Now, watch the threefold blessing that comes forth in verse 7. And David said unto him, and David said unto him, Fear not. Fear not. Boy, stop being scared. <laughs> because this is what's getting ready to happen. I'm getting ready to bless you. And let me tell you how I'm getting ready to bless you, Pastor Howard. Read. For I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father. Stop right there. I'm going to be kind and nice and sweet to you. And I'm going to give you all I know how to give you. Watch this, y'all. Not because of you, but because of your father. Jonathan, who hang in there with me, who had my back when your grandfather chased me and threw javelins at me and tried to kill me. His son, Jonathan, your dad, protected me. And because your father was there for me to be and took care of me and heard my complaints about your grandfather, and because your father did not turn his back on me, Cheryl, but he is dead, and I wanted to bless him before he checked out here, I gotta give it to you. Generational. So we'll finish it. Come on forth, boy. 
You better load a bar. Too long. I know your legs ain't working, the nurse dropped you, you're crippled, you can't walk, and nobody wants to have nothing to do with you because they're turning their nose up at you. See, let me tell you something, you, you, you can't do that to folks. Because God has a way of turning things around. And that same person who you're turning your nose up at and who you are scorning and who you are talking down to, God going to give them all the blessing. And your mouth is going to drop. And you may have to go to them to get something. So be careful how you treat folks. What you say to folks. What you say about folks. Because that may be the person who has to come back and reach in their pocket and pay your rent or your mortgage so the people can't foreclose and kick you out. I've seen it happen too many times. And so, he said, I will surely show the kindness for your father's sin. Let me pause here. I'm going on. All of us who have children out there, the old folks always say, you got kids, you better live right. Because folks, if they don't get you back for the wickedness you did to them and the evilness you did to them, they know this one is your child, they know that one, oh, that's her child, oh, I remember when she did this to me. Uh-uh, don't give her that job. I remember what her mama did to me. That's why some of y'all don't have jobs right now. Because of what your parents did to other folks. Kept them from getting jobs, blocked them from getting jobs. <laughs> That's why some of y'all can't keep money because your parents or your grandparents or great-great-grandparents blocked everybody else from getting in on the deal so they can't get the money. So the curse followed you. Just how there are generational blessings, there are generational cursings. I say this again. You have kids, be careful how you live. You're not living just for you. you. You're living for those kids too. You're living for them too, Tamika. Be careful what you do. And I'm not just picking on y'all. I'm just calling names as I look around and see folks. So now when you see stuff going on with your child and you're trying to figure out, well, why are they doing my baby like this? And why are they doing this? You better backtrack and see what you did to somebody. And when you realize what you did, go repent. Ask God for forgiveness, clear that up, and then ask God to lift that curse off your child. Or off you or whatever. Okay, so let's move on. So he said, I will show you kind of your father, Johnson say, and keep reading, and will what? Restore. Restore the all the land of Saul, my father. And he will restore. Restore means I'm gonna give you back everything that you supposed to have that was taken from you or that you never got a chance to get. Restoration. So he told him, he said, I'm going to be good, be kind, and show you some blessings and release some blessings on you because of your father, Jonathan, and then I'm going to turn around and give you back all of the land. I'm going to restore unto thee all the land of Saul, thy father. Really, so was his grandfather. So David said, "Now David could have kept all the land because he was the king now." But he said, "No, because your daddy Jonathan was good to me. I'm gonna go ahead on and give you all this. Look, look how he's blessing Mephibosheth. Keep reading, and thou shalt eat bread at my table. Continue. In other words, you ain't gonna want for nothing." For the rest of y'all. <laughs> Bringing you out of a down place. Being down in a low place. Bringing you out from under that curse. 
And I'm going to release this blessing upon you. Mephibosheth, y'all ain't getting this today. You get a break? Because you've been in this situation too. Who is sick and tired of going through with that? Y'all ain't sick and tired. When you're sick and tired of something, you're going to get mad. I don't see no mad folks up in here. No mad. If you're sick and tired of something, Vicky, you're going to get mad. You're going to start talking to that thing. And that thing will hear you. And you tell it what it's going to do and what it's not going to do. You got to get mad. You have to get mad at a thing. You have to address it and talk to it. Tell it what it's not going to do and what it better do. Y'all going to laugh at me. Put me on pause here. <laughs>